So a lot of the time when we first interact with people and ask them to come up with problems that they want to solve, they often name a solution because they have a preset idea of the solution and hence they never really have thought through to the problem to which this, that was a solution. So I teach dozens and dozens of students in every year and one of the exercises we have them do is try and formulate a solution to a policy problem. So we do the exercise of start by writing down the problem. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? Then we do the exercise of write down one solution to your problem. That's easy. They all can write down one solution to their problem. And then comes the hard part of the exercise that differentiates whether you've really just written down a problem or written down a solution, which is write down three other solutions to your problem. <laughs> so then I say, okay, now write down, other than the solution you've written down, write down option A, <laughs> option B, and option C. Oftentimes, they can't do this. Why can't they do this? They can't do this because they have essentially drawn too tight a link between the problem and the solution. So for instance, <clears throat> They'll say, the, my problem is that I have a lack of trained teachers. And therefore, <laughs> the solution is to train teachers. And then if you think, well, what are the alternative options to solving my problem of lacking trained teachers, you realize, well, there aren't any other solutions. If I have defined my problem as a lack of trained teachers, there aren't any other solutions besides training teachers because I defined my problem as the lack of my solution, which means I'm really not open to anything other than business as usual and doing the mimic thing. Now, if we said, wait a second, you really had a deeper problem hiding somewhere, which is you had inadequate student learning. And the reason you wanted trained teachers was that you didn't have enough you weren't getting the student learning you thought you could get. And hence, now I've pushed my problem away from my solution to where now if I frame the problem as lack of student learning, I can have lots of different ways of imagining solving this problem. So <clears throat> our rule of thumb is if you can't imagine at least three alternative solutions to your problem, you don't have a problem. You have formulated a solution as a problem. <coughs> and if you start from the formulation of your problem is your lack of your solution, you can never really be creative enough to start to dig down deep enough to get to where you can solve the problem you really have.